first met him in uh, Pyramid Valley, Bangalore, when I went uh, to attend a conference there. And he has done wonderful work in biofield imaging. So, if simple, you can see this photo in your mind, feelings, emotions, chakras, energy flow, whatever the problems are going on, he can pinpoint that this is happening in your mind. And he can tell you ki, what is the you know, root cause, seed cause, relationship issues, or something in the past or something in the childhood. Ki, what is causing that block in the energy flow? That precision is there in his technology and his, in his uh, diagnosis. So you can catch him outside, you know, in the uh, stall area and all and learn from him various things. He's a very, very, you know, uh, uh, speaker who is high in demand. And uh, please make use of his time here in Mali. And uh, Thonton, are you ready with the presentation? Yeah, I'm ready. Always. I say, I, if, you, if you advance, we'll be right. Oh, they'll come in, it's fine. Perfect. Hello. I especially wanted to welcome all the amazing young students from the Ayurveda College in Hisor. And I'm really impressed you're all here. Trust me, this lecture is for you guys, especially, because this is the future that we're going to be speaking about today. And you are the future. So I wear a number of different hats. I won't go into it in great detail, but I am the founder of the Center for Biofield Sciences. Biofield is the scientific word we use for the human aura worldwide. Um, but you'll also notice on the top corner the Energy Medicine Exchange. And this is a Facebook group. So if you'd like to continue in discussion with me and my family, we're nearly 50,000 professional practitioners all around the world, please join that Facebook group, Energy Medicine Exchange. That would be wonderful. So um, having spent 20 years at MIT in Pune, I am now, uh, uh, we have our own institute in Panjim in Goa, uh, which has now become almost a, a new capital for yoga in India with so many foreigners and so many great local teachers, it's become a real melting pot for us. And uh, I'm delighted to be based there. So this presentation is about the human atmosphere. The human atmosphere, and it is the missing link for health sciences. It's the missing link. This morning I was speaking with some of the students at the uh, university and I asked them if they knew what were the chakras. And they were saying the first time they're hearing the chakras is today. So this is something that we must all address because the treasure chest that is India's traditional medicine is sustainable medicine for the entire world. Your biggest export will be your traditional medicine in a modernized form. And it's very, very incorrect for people like me to come and talk to you about this subject. Really, you should be around the rest of the world telling everybody else. So I am just a space holder while you guys wake up from the Kali Yug. So we see everywhere in art, we see this halo around people. Now, what is interesting is that everybody in this room is able to see the halo around somebody. You just have to look, okay? So I don't know what the lighting is like in here, but if you look at my halo, you will see it. Because in school we go from the pencil to the blackboard, from the pencil to the blackboard, from the pencil to the whiteboard, we still are getting programmed to focus our eyes. It's programming. But I'm not talking about focusing, I'm talking about seeing. 
And clairvoyance is a word which just means clear seeing. Now, what's interesting about this features in art is this was the original aura imaging. When we see these uh, paintings in the Christian uh, community and we see the statues and the paintings in the Buddha, uh, with the Buddha, and even when we look at the Hindu information that is there, we're all speaking to the same subject. And this is very, very important. But what is crucial for us as scientists is to understand that these ancient images are maps. And let me give you a really good example of what I mean. So you see here these chakras down the central vertex of the individual have different number of petals. Some have four and it goes up and up and up. Now, in the old days, the rishis did not have any measuring equipment. They did not have oscilloscopes. But they were able to communicate the frequency of each chakra by the number of petals. This is very interesting that they're teaching us about frequency and the range of each chakra within the spectrum that is the human being. Okay. Towards the end of my presentation, I'm going to do a, a, a vivid demonstration of what are the chakras. But it's important that we have a seamless integration from the human body to the human biofield. Many of the students we know in medical schools, even today, only learn about the body. And they study the body with a dead body. And they have no idea what is the dynamic systems that lead to our consciousness. So the biofield and consciousness are two interchangeable words. So my speciality is imaging. But I want to talk about the downside of imaging as well as the upside of imaging. Because we need to know at what price we're paying to see something. For example, when a lady goes for a mammogram, she has a 5% chance of getting breast cancer from the mammogram. So if she's 50 years old, it is a coin toss whether she will get cancer from her next scan. These invasive methods of screening, harmful, they may do more harm than good. Let me give you another example. There are 300 million girls missing. 300 million girls missing. Now that is more girls than any boy died in any war. First World War, Second World War, Gulf War, the medi medieval wars. 300 million girls. It's called gender side. Gender side. When only one sex is targeted. And it's through medical malpractice. By doing this ultrasound, identifying the female child and removing, 300 million girls are missing. That means in our population today, in India, you know very well, there are 300 million boys, or maybe 100 million boys in India specifically, who will never find love because the girl is not there. It's a very unfortunate situation. So now, as my colleague Blossom was speaking earlier in this wonderful faculty, it's all about prevention. We are not here to chase the ambulance. We're not here for that. They say there's a golden hour where if this heart attack is rushed to hospital within an hour, there's some chance of survival. What we're talking about today with all of our modalities is a golden year. Maybe golden five years where we can identify issues and deal with them sustainably. It means the cost of giving somebody good uh, food and stress uh, advice is much cheaper than doing surgery. So if we can avoid the surgery, then we can use our limited resources 
for accidents, emergencies, geriatric care, pediatric care. But this mass of chronic cases will not be here in their generation. It will not be here because we are now working with technology. We had to wait. We had to wait for an industrial revolution. In 1905, they declared the ether does not exist. And they declared it because they didn't have equipment measure sensitive enough to measure it, this bioplasma. So now we've had an industrial revolution, technological revolution, computer revolution, quantum science revolution. And so now we have technology sensitive enough to measure what your rishis have been teaching for thousands of years. So it's time to do the work. This picture shows the light in an orange. Orange is a living being. And so when I am an orange tree, I am sucking the light from the sun with my leaves. And I make these fabulous balls of fruit which have the, everything the seed needs, the water, it has the nutrients, the minerals, but especially the light, what is the main quality for life. Now, you can see with this picture what happens if we microwave an apple. Here, this, oops, oops, <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Just, the, it's a dual screen thing, isn't it? Maybe I press it again. Please, thank you. Just get it back. So this apple on the left-hand side, you'll see all of the light has depleted. It's, it's become weaker. And that is why it is so important for us to honor the ancient ways of preparing food. Last night, we had a discussion about the pressure cooker and how this modern British invention has ruined the cooking in India, when really we should have clay pots and raw, fresh food. And I was delighted earlier to be sitting next to an organic farmer, and I was especially delighted that my lunch today was organic food, because that is full of light. And the difference between a human being and a human doing is light. Now, we want to be human beings. Human doing means traffic jam. It means working for somebody else. It means not in ownership of your own boundaries. When we own our boundaries, we can transcend them. It's working? I just pressed only one button. I pressed that. Uh, maybe we just take this thing out. Yeah, we, yeah you... Just take it out and see if we get it back. I think it might also be because I've got maybe two screens. To see. I think it'll come back now. Oops. I can do this without pictures, but I think it would help. It's going to work? So when I speak about the biofield, and I speak about light. What is it that we're actually talking about? Notice from this image the emanations coming from the finger. Now, first of all, we must go back to school. And what are the four states of matter? Solid, liquid, gas, plasma. Exactly. So for some reason, modern medicine has forgotten plasma. And they don't want to know about it, and they don't want to measure it, because you can't sell pharmaceutical medicines to people who know about plasma. Ironic as this might be. Now you may also notice that there are gaps here. There's a gap in this plasma. What we're saying effectively is this palm, these lines on the palm, is the skeleton of the soul. If the bones become the skeleton of the body, the light story which emanates from our unique grooves in our fingerprint 
is the story of our individual soul journey. So this is an opportunity for us to do integrative health care, where we're fully aware of all of the states, solid, liquid, gas, and ether. And now also we're aware of so many wonderful tools which allow us to work with this bioplasma. For example, crystals. And that is why you'll always find crystals associated with holistic healthcare because they are bioplasma in a natural state. And even there on the left, a sophisticated technology for delivering plasma. Now, when you look at an individual clairvoyantly, we do not see the body. The body is inside, like the seed in the orange. What we see is the toroid. This is like a donut, but it is also like the atmosphere around the planet. And so we're able to fully understand someone's well-being by the state of this toroid and by the state of these anatomical features which I've just introduced, the chakras. But there's so much science which supports this investigations. And the most important thing from my presentation today is to encourage Indian universities to attend and investigate this matter. It is the most important thing because otherwise you will miss the bus again. So we have this understanding that the body emits biophotons. And just to give you an example, if I put my hand in front of a biophoton counter in a normal state, I will emit so many biophotons per square centimeter second. And if I intend healing for blossom, that goes up by 10,000. In other words, I'm like Spider-Man. And I can fire my light like Spider-Man can fire his web. So what are we going to do with that? Are we going to fire it off everywhere and then we're drained? Or are we going to heal somebody and put them in the middle of a circle? Where it's coming out this side and it's also coming back here. We can also recycle. <clears throat> and there's a lot of research you can find, like on PubMed. So let's talk about this for a minute, this biophotonic emissions. This is a Japanese uh, lab and uh, full color imagery. Now this man is smoking cigarettes. So the chemicals, the nicotine and the heat has damaged the subtle energy around his fingers. And so the energy is leaking out. Now this is time for a good analogy, which is the candle. Let's light a candle for one second. How long does a candle last? Is it one day? Is it one hour? It, de it depends on the wind. If the camera is, if the candle is in a still place, then the uh, flame will also be still. Thank you, thank you. So you see this flame here. This flame is dancing now because this door has some cracks and the breeze is coming in and blowing the flame, which means this candle will not last six hours. It may only last one hour. And this is the same story for our health. If the flame is still, as it is with a meditator, then the supply of life is the longest. If the flame is dancing and flickering in the nightclub every night, then it uses up its wax very quickly. And this is what we're seeing here in a scientific process, that sick people are losing their life force.